Hello and thank you for watching. I am Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, block files using variables in blanks. We'll build on what we learned last time in the block files series to learn how to use variable fields to fill in multiple blank fields in a document with the same information automatically, and also how to use variables to automatically increment information. In our previous document, we learned how to insert blank fields by going to a block file, by pressing Ctrl A to bring up the add blank dialog. One of the features that we did not cover, however, was the variable field. As covered previously, the field label is simply a reminder of what information should go into this blank field when you're filling it in. However, the variable will automatically fill in information for you if there are other fields with the same variable. In my title page, as a for instance, I have two fields where it says county on the same page. If I right click on the first field at the top that says county and go to properties, you see that my field label says county, indicating to me what information should go there. However, the variable also says county. And that means that any other form fields that also use the same county variable will get filled in with the same information when they're scanned to. In addition to the county blank field, I have put variables in the blank fields for plaintiff, defendant, case number, and date as well. If I right click on plaintiff and go to properties, my variable is set to PLF. If I right click on case number and go to properties, my variable is set to case. And if I right click on defendant and go to properties, my variable is set to DEF. And if I right click on date and choose properties, my variable is simply set to date. I've created a sample file that is using several variable fields. And you see again that I have the same fields in the title page. And if I check the properties, the variable field in each of these is set up like it should be as I requested. And in this document, I have added testimony in addition to a sworn statement and a header. My sworn statement has a blank field for the witness. And if I look up, I see that I also have a header line that has a blank field for the witness as well. If I right click and choose properties, I see that my variable for the blank field in the header is set to wit. And if I right click and choose properties on my sworn statement witness entry, the variable is also set to wit there. This means that when I fill in my blank field in the header, as soon as the blank field for the sworn statement is scanned to, it will also fill in automatically. In addition to allowing you to fill the same information into multiple fields, variables also allow you to automatically increment the information that is filled into various blank fields. You see that throughout my testimony, I have inserted lines where exhibits are being marked for identification. And I have two sets of exhibits, my defendant's exhibits and my plaintiff's exhibits. If I right click on one of my plaintiff exhibits blank fields and go to properties, you see that my variable is set to EX for exhibit and then alpha. Alpha means that this field will automatically increment when I fill it in with a letter. So if I fill in the first one with an A, the next blank field that sees EX alpha as its variable will automatically prompt me to fill in a B. And since I have prompt for contents checked on these, it will confirm with me before filling it in that that's the information that should go there. I've done a similar thing for the plaintiff's exhibit. If I right click and go to properties, I have EX for exhibit and then NUM. These exhibits will increment numerically if I fill them in with a number. So what I'm going to do is fill in all of my exhibits for defendants with letters and for plaintiffs with numbers. And as I fill them in, you'll see that they'll automatically increment, but allow me to confirm the data that goes into the blank field before it's saved. Scrolling to the end of my document, you see that on my cert page, I have some more blank fields that are represented in my title page as well. I have the county, date, plaintiff, defendant, and case number. As I fill in the form fields, since I'm going to provide all this information in my title page, once I get to my certificate page, these will all fill in automatically, and I should only be prompted to provide information for the fields in this very last line because I don't have any complementary fields to get variables from. What I'm going to do next is go to the top of this document and I'm going to start filling in the blank fields. I'll press control page up and I'll put my cursor on the first line of the text just to hide my omit line. And to fill in blanks as we discussed in the first video is control E or hyper key E. 
and this one, you can see that it is prompting me at the top for what information should be filled in. And since I put as my field label county, that's what it's telling me to fill in. So I can type in the county name. And when I press OK, since I didn't have last field checked on any of the fields in my title or certificate page, it's going to take me to the next field automatically. And it's taken me to the case number, so I'll fill in the case number. And when I press OK, it should take me to fill in the plaintiff. And when I press OK, I'll fill in the defendant information. And next it will prompt me to fill in the date. Next I'll be prompted to fill in the city and the county, however, will autofill since I used the variable field in the previous county. So I'll press OK to get to the city designation. And since I used the same variable for this second instance of county as I used for the first instance of county at the top of the document, as soon as I press OK to the city, the second instance of county will automatically be filled in with the same information. So as soon as I press OK to Fort Pierce, St. Lucie County should appear in the next form field. And you see that that is indeed the case here. Although it's taken me automatically to the next blank field, which is the witness name, you see that St. Lucie County has automatically filled appropriately for me. And since I didn't have last field checked, it's automatically taken me to the next blank field, which is for the witness name. I'm going to press OK to fill in the witness name in the header, and this should also fill in the witness name at the top of my sworn statement. I'll press OK. And it has taken me to the first defendant's exhibit blank field. However, you see that at the top of my sworn statement, my witness name has been filled in appropriately, and my header is also displaying the witness name correctly now instead of an empty blank field. Since I used EX alpha as my variable for my defendant's exhibits, I'm going to fill these in with a letter. And since this is the first defendant's exhibit, I'm going to fill in the first one with an A. When I press OK, it's going to take me to the plaintiff's exhibit, which I filled it in with EXNUM, so I'm going to fill those in with numbers instead of letters. I'll press OK, and for my first plaintiff's exhibit, I'm going to type in number 1, and when I press OK, it's going to take me to the next exhibit. And you see that it's taken me to the next defendant's exhibit, and it's automatically filled the information in with B, which is the next alphabetical increment. Since this variable was set to EX alpha, it's automatically able to fill that in for me. And when I press OK, it's going to take me to the next plaintiff's exhibit, which, since I filled it in with EXNUM, has automatically incremented to 2 since I filled in the first one with 1. And if I press OK, this will continue. The next one is C and 3. The next group are D and 4. The next set, E and 5 and the next set, F and 6. And when I press OK to fill in the last exhibit, it has automatically filled in all the information in my certificate page since all of these fields had a corresponding variable that was already filled in on my title page. All I have to fill in is the date format, which is just formatted a little bit differently on this page. I'll type in today's date. And you see that in only a few moments, I have filled in all of the missing information in my document. I filled in 12 exhibits and all of the blank fields in my title page, in my header and my sworn statement, and in my certificate page, automatically only providing a small bit of information manually. The information that you provide when you fill in the blank fields is stored in the job variables window. If I go to tools and job variables, you see that all of my variables are listed here. The case number is listed, the county and date, the defendant and plaintiff, as well as the witness, and it also tells me where the count left off on my incrementing exhibit numbers. So I know that my last alpha exhibit for the defense was F, and my last numerical exhibit for the plaintiffs was 6. If I add additional blank fields to this document that use the same variable fields, Eclipse will use this information from the job variables table to fill that in if I choose to fill in the blank fields. Using blank fields with block files is a huge time saver and it's very easy to get started with simple variables. 
Eclipse can automatically keep track of your exhibit numbers for you, so you don't have to scroll back up pages to see which exhibit was marked last. Eclipse will be able to tell you which exhibit number you're on as long as you fill in a variable that allows it to count automatically for you. As a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24-7. Technical support can be reached anytime including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching. Please thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content. Thank you so much and have a great day.